Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out the Station PC from Firefly or the Geek 3588. So let's get started. So I do want to thank Firefly for sending this over to me for review. Uh, they actually sent this over to me about a month and a half ago and I've been playing around with it. I couldn't get certain things to work at first so I pushed off reviewing it because those were more important than what it pre-shipped with. So yes, anything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. So I do want to thank them again for sending this over to me. Now this is a SBC. One of the largest ones that I could say uh, I've ever played around with. It is built on top of an ITX motherboard, which means you can actually fit it into a standard case like this. Now it does also have a pin connector so you could plug in a power supply to power this instead of using a barrel connector in the back. Most importantly, this is practically a server. Now, Let's talk about the connections on the outside. First, we have our power button in front. Right underneath that, you can't really see right now, but there are hard drive indicators and the power indicator. On the top over here, uh, you have two USB 2 ports. Towards the back, this is the interesting bit. You see, this is really cool. This is an ITX uh, frame that you could actually plug into an actual regular case. So starting from left to right, you have your barrel connector, then you have your USB-C, you have your VGA, and then your HDMI in. So it does allow for HDMI in capture. Then you have HDMI 4K out, then an HDMI 8K out, two ethernet ports, four USB 3s, then you have your standard mic in, line out, and audio out. And then on top, you have antennas for your Wi-Fi 6. And then most importantly, there's an SD card port in the back. And that is very important because that is what you need to use to flash the device to different operating systems. Now, when they first ship, it does come with something called the Station OS, which is their primary Android operating system that allows you to run this type of chipset. And it actually has uh, Android TV uh, capabilities where you can actually install whatever programs you want. And it does have some server features in there, which is Samba, uh, SFTP, and a few other things. But because of how this board is built, which is an ITX board and what the connections they have inside the operating system itself does not do this board any justice uh, android operating system is great but for what we can use this for like uh, ubuntu or debian dockers uh, hosting a lot of stuff uh, with the connections that we have built in android os won't be able to handle all that especially the pcie port so jumping into inside the case you have this uh, tempered glass on top so inside here, there's a lot of things going on. First, we do have a PCIe 4X port, which is PCIe 3.0. Uh, you also have two, uh, well, this is an NVMe, and then you have your regular PCIe, the MPCIe or micro PCIe. RS232 uh, connection and, and RS485 connection over here. You also still retain GPIOs if you really need to use it. And then you have a USB over here and then another USB which goes to the front port. So you can actually have another USB uh, set up over here. Another USB built inside, a Molex cable four pin, and then four SATA connectors. And yeah, they actually come with the, uh, the power cord and all four SATA connectors if you wanna hook up four hard drives. Uh, you also have two DSi ports over here and then another NVMe. Now, if you wanted to hook this up to a regular case, you can use this power port over here. And then you also have your pinouts over here for power, hard drive, and uh, activity LED. And the main core of this is this, which Firefly calls this the Core 3588. This is actually hooked on because of like a RAM slot. And you can actually take this off and use this separately on a different board. But this is the board that it comes shipped with. Now you can fit a three and a half inch drive. It does come with a panel that I don't have one, but it installs over here to the pin over here. And then you could actually place a three and a half inch drive over here. Now in this case itself, I you could kind of squeeze a hard drive onto the side. And let me flip this over to the other way. You can kind of flip this over to the side and it'll fit in there if you kind of loosely just, if you don't mind it. But otherwise you can get a bracket that goes on top that could host a two and a half inch or three and a half inch on top. Now, a few other connections that I didn't talk about are these reset buttons. You do need to use these if you're gonna flash with the SD card. You also have pinouts for mic, audio, and line out. But yeah, just judging the size and what you can do with this board, all this over here, uh, it makes for a very good server SBC. Now, as far as the CPU specs goes, I'm gonna leave it all right over here. Uh, it's a Rock 3588, uh, eight core, 2.2 gigahertz max. 
and it on this version it has 8 gigs of ram with 64 gigabytes of emmc so it's plenty of storage it does have 8 gigs of ram which is great wi-fi 6 two gigabit ethernet ports and Bluetooth. Now I did run station OS for the beginning, probably maybe the first 10 minutes before I decided quickly that this needs an actual operating system like Ubuntu or Debian. Running through the settings, you could get Samba or SFTP if you wanted to, but yeah, I quickly jumped off that and jumped right into Ubuntu. Now, as far as Ubuntu goes, this is a great desktop operating system if you just need to. It's very responsive. It could run Firefox. It could run everything that you need, some emulation as well. And on top of that, because it's on a very powerful ARM CPU, it does, like I said, run the desktop very well. Now, the fun part begins when I jump into Debian. After I got Debian installed, I managed to actually run some Dockers, which is standard. You could probably run it on a lot of operating systems, including Ubuntu. But what I was most interested in was actually getting this one to run Proxmox, and it did. I was able to install Proxmox. Some configuration required because there were some things that you do need to change from the default setup. But yes, Proxmox does run right off this, and it runs pretty well, especially since you have two Ethernet ports. You can just assign one for dedicated VM and the other one just for the host itself. Uh, you have four hard drive ports, so you could actually expand your storage to fit more VMs if you are interested in running on ARM64 VMs. And if you needed to, I haven't tried it yet, but since there is a PCIe slot, it may maybe could be possible to do PCIe pass-through. I did run also a benchmark on this, the same benchmark that I ran for the Kadas 3588S. And surprisingly enough, the Kadas board with the subversion of this CPU ran slightly faster. I believe it has to do with the actual build of the Linux kernel and everything. So uh, if they fine tune this a little bit more, the CPU should be faster. But according to the benchmarks, it is slightly slower. I thoroughly enjoyed playing around with this board, uh, especially now that I got Ubuntu and Debian working. And it is a workhorse. It's so powerful that I'm able to run a lot of my stuff off this. Especially the fact that I can actually put three and a half inch hard drives in here makes a world of difference. I eventually do want to put this onto my little ITX NAS case that I have and play around with it that way and have four three and a half inch drives and see how far I can take this board. But for now, it, it's been impressive. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and that same my nerd cave hack till it hurts